here we have a page of notes on galvanometers. Now, galvanometers were the predecessors to the voltmeters and ammeters. A galvanometer is essentially a box, like a little metal box. It would have like a round dial on it with like a pointer needle that would point to a zero. And then it would have a like full scale deflection somewhere over here when the needle pinned to the other side. So basically you would run current into the galvanometer and depending on the amount of current flowing through the galvanometer, the needle will deflect. Now, when we study magnetism, we'll understand more about the details of why this needle will deflect when we run current through it. The basic premise is that when the current goes through the galvanometer, so our schematic for a galvanometer is shown here. So this blue dot to this blue dot represents the galvanometer deflection needle. When the current runs through it, it runs through a coil. That coil makes what is called an electromagnet, and magnets will always try to align themselves to each other. So this electromagnet coil, which we glue the needle to, will deflect in the presence of a permanent magnet that we have as part of the galvanometer. So galvanometers were reasonably heavy devices because you needed to have a, a permanent magnet, like a refrigerator magnet, inside the galvanometer as well. Well, enough about magnetism and rotation. We'll talk more about that. Now, the galvanometer questions that you will be asked will be either galvanometer as an ammeter, or galvanometer acting as a voltmeter. And we'll see how the, the, that rotation can give us both uh, current and voltage information. If the galvanometer is functioning as an ammeter, so you want to be able to measure the amperage, the current that is flowing in, this 20 amps, for example. Well, when you would purchase a galvanometer, you would know the little r value and the amperage that was required based on what you were purchasing out of the box, that if a one amp current flowed through this resistance, which was fixed for the galvanometer, 100 ohms, you would get a full scale deflection. So the first thing you need to do is understand everything about a full scale deflection. So in other words, a hundred volts is the voltage that would correspond to the full scale deflection. Well, you can see here that if you wanted your application of this galvanometer to function such that it would have a full scale deflection, not with one amp, but with 20 amps, then you have to pull off 19 amps. And you pull off 19 amps by putting a resistor, capital R, in parallel with the galvanometer needle and pull off the 19 amps. Well, and as it shows here, that calculation is not very difficult. We know it's the 100 volts because they're in parallel, same color, same voltage. We're pulling off the 19 amps so that R value that we need to have this galvanometer, 100 ohms at one amps, operate as a 20 amp meter. We need to pull off the 19 amps and have the 5.26 ohm resistor. The bottom line for you in terms of understanding galvanometer questions is to focus on the fact that if a galvanometer is going to operate as an ammeter, you need to calculate what resistance do you need to put in parallel with it to get it to work how you want it to work. Well, the other function for a galvanometer, as it says here, is to let the galvanometer function as a voltmeter. Again, you need to focus your initial calculations on everything about what is purchased out of the box galvanometer. If the little r, it's the same galvanometer, little r is 100 ohms at one amp, gives a full scale deflection. We just calculated and if we weren't given it, we would know that it's a 100 volt uh, voltage drop across little r that will give a full scale deflection. And if I want this needle to 
deflect fully when the voltage across my galvanometer, remember my schematic for the galvanometer is the blue and the blue, when there's a 10,000 volt voltage difference across the galvanometer here to here, then I need 100 volts to get my full scale deflection and I need the other 9,900 volts to be a voltage drop across the resistor that I'm going to add into the circuit. So I put the voltage that I'm going to need to drop across that resistor into my Ohm's law calculation. It will still be a one amp current that gives me my full scale deflection. So I put in the one amp and I get a 9,900 ohm resistor in this case. And as far as your Solving galvanometer problems, it is vital that you know that galvanometers as voltmeters, you will be connecting the R in series to split the voltage up. On the top example, we were splitting the current up. Now we're splitting the voltage up to get the galvanometer to operate as a voltmeter. So these were the devices that were used in the 19. 20s, 30s, 40s, even into the 1950s and 60s to measure current and voltage before the digital multimeters were invented and give us the ability to do what we now do in the lab. So hopefully you found this somewhat interesting and there are multiple choice questions usually uh, on the AP test for galvanometers. So hopefully this helped you better understand that.